Welcome to this walkthrough of the updated Solar Park financial model template from efinancialmodels.com. The objective of this financial model template is to come up with financial projections for a new Solar Park project and to calculate all the financial metrics needed to determine its financial feasibility, especially to look at the ratios which you can expect to be requested by investors and by banks. The structure of this model is that we have here uh, different worksheets. We have here one main worksheet, which is the summary worksheet, uh, which incl um, includes uh, an overview of the uh, financials, of the metrics. It also includes the sections where you can input the key assumptions, uh, uses of sources of funds, um, diverse uh, charts, uh, further areas to input, and also to look at scenarios, etc. The second sheet is the sheet financials, which basically is used to calculate year by year what's going to happen. Um, there are sections in there for uh, which deal with the volume projections, inflation prices, uh, the cost estimations, uh, income statement, balance sheet, projected cash flow statements, etc. etc. This is all in there in the financial sheet. Some, um, some model versions also include additional sheets. We have here one sheet uh, which can be used to pull out a bit um, better formatted um, <coughs> tables and charts if you plan to put this in a, um, a PowerPoint uh, report. And another sheet which gives you a, a more a complex or a more sophisticated way to consider the effects of tax incentives for your solar park. Um, then we also use here different uh, color codes. Let's um, go up a bit. For instance, um, the blue blue coded colors they mean these are inputs, so you can change. It will not affect the the structure of the model. It will just uh, go through and. And the inputs will basically lead in a, in the updated um, <coughs> calculation of all the the, uh, the financials and also the metrics. We have black cells, which are output cells. They either include calculations or references. <coughs> or in some cases, we also have green cells. These are used to uh, basically uh, mark important links from uh, which when whenever figures are used from other spreadsheets. So we just use this color code to mark to mark this. So how to work with this model? The model, um, the best way to do this, uh, to, to work with this model, is to start working through uh, the assumptions. Uh, first, you could start with the capital expenditures. How much does it cost to build the park? Uh, we also have here a general sections which should be, should define how many years the lifetime is of the park, what's the size of the park, how, much, how many kilowatt peak or megawatt um, you're planning to build, what's the solar yield, what's the total uh, maximum um, uh, capacity this park or how much energy this park can, <clears throat> are you expecting to, uh, to run. Then we also have to consider some <clears throat> annual capacity degression due to the material being used and the uh, capacity or basically the energy production decreases a bit over time so that this is factors at the end <clears throat> you start at 100% you at the beginning you start at 100% and this factor then will determine at what the <clears throat> ending capacity will look like um, <clears throat> many of the parks they are built in different phases so what we also have here is the phasing model so that you can uh, simulate how the your phasing plan will impact um, the, um, your business case. In this case, we have three phases where we build a two and a half megawatt at the beginning, then the rest over two more phases up to year four, and at year four we are fully operational. Then um, another. Uh, these are basically used to to determine the uh, the cost, and you can then basically see how the how these uh, costs affect the uh, the buildup of the capacity and also the uh, what this means in terms of the capex. You should then see that depending on your phasing, the capex will show up at different years in your phasing <coughs> in your in your cash flow statement. 
Then the next topic to work through would be your revenues. Um, there are two models or two ways to, to sell energy with uh, solar parks in principle. So we have either we can just sell at a fixed price. In that case, um, it could be that the duration of this fixed price is different than the lifetime. So we can here enter a different uh, number of years. And then what this happens is if you look at the uh, the forecast you have here the um, uh, after all the calculations how much electricity is produced we say uh, 20 years is sold via the PPA and then after year 20 it's basically sold at the market price or market price plus a markup in our case we have just assumed that for 20 years we sell it at 550 and then after that at market price at 5 cents per kilowatt hour and no premium. For projects where you sell at market price plus a premium you can simply <coughs> change to 0% here and then basically uh, add a premium on top then <coughs> it will basically um, let me just shortly show that it will <coughs> define your revenues then differently so that we have here how much is sold at market price and so how much is sold at the premium so the different ways to put this in our case we go back to simply a ppa for 20 20 years um, there are further factors to also include uh, price changes annual price changes in terms of your selling prices or in your cost in this case we have assumed all prices to remain stable, but actually to incur 2% higher costs per year, which is then reflected in the financials. So that would be the revenues. Then <clears throat> next topic to, uh, to work through is your um, annual operations and maintenance costs. And here we have specified these differently per phase, so we can properly reflect the buildup of capacity. And you have here per phase a different budget and you could also insert if it's um, in case it's a percentage of revenue you could insert here or if it's a, a function of cents per kilowatt hours it could also be inserted uh, here and on the financial sheet you have a whole section which just deals with your cost projection so the idea is that you work this through and it will give you um, <coughs> quite quickly a um, <clears throat> how your cost structures look like. You can also then check back and see if these fi relative figures are in line with other co uh, projects, if that makes sense to you or not. Um, <clears throat> so once this is all done, we also need to look at the financing structure. In this case, we have <clears throat> a bit more than 4 million to, of investments to finance, so we can use some debt financing. This brings... <clears throat> um, the total loan to value ratio up to 56 some projects are higher some lower you will have to see what you can expect to obtain from the banks uh, this model also would have an option to include some subsidies on the capex so in case that's the case you could simply <clears throat> use here the subsidy model and say how much is the percentage uh, of capex you can be financed or receive via subsidies in that case it would input here for this uh, example, we don't use we don't use this. And <clears throat> then here's another specialty that because we have here the phasing plan, we calculate the total costs required uh, up to phase three. But this also means that during phase one and phase two, we have some cash flow. So you see here that the the project is already generating some money, so we can use this money to pay for some of the investments in phase. For. So that's why we have some <coughs> contribution here. And all the rest has to be financed by equity, and that's how we calculate the equity amount of this project. Then, <coughs> two more things. This model um, also has a view or um, an option to look at the cash flows from a developer point of view. So a developer will basically build the project and then <clears throat> will want to sell it. So he assumes all the risk and for this, of course, he gets um, a return. So <clears throat> the developer's cash flows are a bit different than the project's cash flows. So what happened here is <clears throat> the developer has to assume all the costs and then here he sells the project to somebody else. 
And now the way this works is we have to first think um, how many years the developer will be invested. In this case, it would be five years or after the um, phase three is built, then he will be ready to exit. Then the question is at which price. So <clears throat> here we have to play around. And the idea is that we price this in terms that the next buyer can get a target IRR. So every buyer has a has an IRR target and we would price this via this multiple <coughs> at the target which we are feel comfortable that there is a buyer for this project. Once this is set we can then basically get a clear view okay um, how much profit are in there for the developer and what is the developer's IRR. And then at the developer's level we can also <coughs> basically split this further and assume that this is um, an entity which consumes of five investors so we can here further um, <coughs> fine-tune who is putting in the money who is getting which equity stake and then um, <coughs> basically split these uh, developers profits further in um, in five different types of investors then another feature of this model are the sensitivity tables here we have we can run sensitivities on any of these uh, IRRs, either levered, unlevered, levered. In this case, we actually focus on the developer IRR. Um, these tables take a bit processing power to processing power to calculate. So what we normally do is once if we want to update the table, we set to automatic. If not, we put it back to automatic, except for data tables. And then what we do is we vary each parameters for instance here the PPA price we can say what would happen if it's 10% lower what would happen if it's 10% higher so that will be the effect on the IRR of the developer but then <coughs> it's basically plotted here so that's that's this this bar here basically and <coughs> this if we uh, if we do this for all the important variables and we vary it by more or less uh, the same um, uh, the same deviations, we can also figure out which are the key, which are the really important parameters which influence or determine the IRR of our developer. In this case, it would mean we would have to <coughs> pay a lot of attention on the capex, on the PPA price, and also on the size of the project. So this model <coughs> gives you the indications for that. If you are looking more towards um, explaining your project with the banks <clears throat> um, basically all the financial ratios are there which are normally requested by the banks and we also have here one uh, view in the powerpoint template which would give you <clears throat> a bit of, um, a bit uh, would explain a bit in more detail what what your plan is if you have to explain your project to the bank in terms of when do you plan to draw down <clears throat> the debt how much interest service is is being charged, what will be the loan balance will look like, uh, does the money still have cash after paying for the loan, what will be the, the ratios. So this could be very useful to explain to your bank. And also if you need to run a stress test, you can, in that case, what would happen if your park produces less energy than anticipated, you can go here to the solar yield. And in that case, for instance, let's say what would happen if you would have 20% less um, energy production. And then we would basically be able to get all this, these figures um, updated so that we can get the bank's point of view. How would the bank look like at that? What ratios would they calculate if they would uh, look at, um, <coughs> at this uh, scenario? So that's it more or less. I hope this gave you a good uh, overview what this model template uh, can do. And we also would like you to, um, to follow our channel and also visit our website efinancialmodels.com. A link to the financial model template is included in the description below. Thank you for watching.